Next up is Team Sweet Pea. Hi, I'm Jennifer Lin, and this is Chen Chi, Chen Chi Li, and we're here to talk to you about Sweet Pea. Um, I thought a lot of you would be, hey, there it is. Okay, <laughs> I thought you guys actually might be able to resonate with this real mom's perspective. When my husband and I first found out we were expecting, we were so excited. And then we were actually surprised by the number of challenges that we faced just to acquire gear. So we actually found a whole series of these baby essentials checklists there are hundreds of items on them, and we spent hours actually cross-referencing them all just to figure out what we actually needed to buy. To me, this is problem number one, being able to figure out what should and should not actually be on the shopping list. Once we actually started doing more research, we realized that each of these items have thousands of different options for different brands, for different models, and really it became um, this trade-off between price and quality. To me, this is the second big problem. Emma joined us in July of 2017, and uh, that was two weeks before I started my MBA, and we were just over the moon. And in a blink of an eye, she went from this infant to this silly toddler, and of course, has outgrown everything that we initially bought for her. This is problem number three. Kids grow really fast, and they also outgrow their gear just as quickly. Problem number four is clutter. There um, is a corner of my tiny apartment that is just dedicated to all of this gear that she has already outgrown. All this to say that ultimately there is a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of money that's going towards acquiring gear with a very useful limited, uh, for a very limited useful time um, for a kid. There actually are options available on the market to actually solve both the time and effort issues. So for instance, um, everyone knows that in the first couple months of a baby's life, nobody in the household gets any sleep. That's actually changing with the SNU. Um, the SNU is a responsive bassinet that actually rocks the baby back to sleep. This saves one to two hours of sleep per night per person in the household. I needed this. It's also $1,300. Um, I uh, had heard a lot about SIDS, which is Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. Um, not only because I was a new mother, but also because I have my master's in public health. And there are new options such as the Owlet available, which is a smart sock that actually tracks the oxygen levels and heart rate of a baby. This would have saved me so much anxiety. It also costs $300. Finally, let's talk about mom a little bit. Um, so I, like most moms, actually spent 20 to 30 hours a week either nursing or pumping. And pumping requires a lot of awkward tubes everywhere. You have to be within arm's reach of an out outlet. Um, and the sound, my husband still has nightmares about it. And the solution to this is actually called the Willow. It is a wireless, quiet um, pump that actually fits inside your bra. This would have saved me 20 hours a week minimum. It also costs $500. So for each of these items, I want to clarify that I actually knew about all of these things. Okay, I knew about each of these different items. I knew about the benefits, and I knew it could save me time and effort. But I really could not justify the price, especially for items that I'd be using for six months or less. So this is where Sweet Pea comes in, because we are actually able to solve all three of those issues. Sweet Pea is a premium baby gear rental solution for all growing families. We provide affordable access to premium gear by leasing the items only for the period of time that your kid actually needs the item, and really simplifying a really complicated time for new parents. Ultimately, we save parents time, money, and effort that is better spent on and with their children. Sweepy offers a couple different bundles. Our basic bundles include these three items, the SNU, which we've already talked about, 
the mamaru, which is a bouncer and swing with multiple movements. Um, and the third is the Ergo Baby 360, which is a ba structured baby carrier. Our premium bundle includes three additional items, including the willow and the outlet, which we've already talked about. And that thing on the, on the right um, is the Wabi. Um, it's a UV uh, dryer and sanitizer for bottle parts, um, pumping parts, pacifiers, toys, you name it. Um, also, we are um, offering any sort of a la carte um, uh, rentals and also any sort of customized bundles we can also uh, comp in. So, we decided our products and bundles based on our survey and interviews. Our survey was released to 1,500 expectant and new moms. We also conducted over 30 in-depth interviews with new parents. From this interview, we got these three main conclusions. The first one is, most parents classified many of our items as premium models in their respective categories. The second one is, despite recognizing the value of such items, they generally couldn't justify the high cost. So as a result, they have to put in more time and effort to find other options that fit their budget and need. So it's a real and widespread problem. In fact, 86% of the survey respondents were very interested in our services. And over 30 moms already in our customer list today. So this 86% is actually 86% of a huge market. There are four million babies born in the US every year, and they account for $11 billion in gear spending alone. I'm just gonna jump straight to the point, to the, to the dark green circle. Um, the California target market that we're actually um, talking about here is actually only focusing on the top 10 counties in California. Um, and we're also only looking at families with incomes between the 50th and 90th percentiles of income. Um, if we actually capture, uh, that entire market is $150 million a year. If we capture the LA market at, um, with a penetration rate of one and a quarter percent, we're anticipating six, 60, sorry, $675,000 in the first year alone. Okay, so why use Sweet Pea? Um, there are a couple other options. Um, for instance, you can actually just buy things outright, you could buy things used, you can try to get hand-me-downs, or you can try to do some of the short-term rentals that are used for travel, usually on like a daily basis. So Sweet Pea, um, we actually limit the number of items, which we actually think is an advantage, because again, it saves that research time that parents are actually going through. Um, the quality of, parent, uh, pro quality of products, honestly, there's nothing like buying new. But Sweet Pea actually has an intake and cleaning process that we actually go through so we can help put parents' mind at ease um, about the cleanliness and safety of their products. Um, because we're a rental service, we um, help so solve this clutter issue by allowing people to have seamlessly return their items. And finally, we actually allow people to access these really premium art items at an affordable rate. So to dive a little bit more into the numbers, um, our basic bundle is $780 for an entire six-month rental. This is about 50% of MSRP if you were to buy the actual items. It's also very comparable. It's actually slightly under what you can actually buy on the used market. Uh, we estimate that our customer acquisition costs will be about $200. Um, that's about 20% of um, our, our average customer LTV um, for a CAC to LTV ratio of one to four. Um, so that was about the customers. Let's talk about the unit economics a little bit. Um, so we're gonna be looking at a bundle. Um, all of the items in these bundles are expected to last five years. In our models, we've, uh, we've used three years instead to do uh, for a couple reasons. First, we wanted to be conservative in our estimates. Second, um, we are also, we're accounting for the constant use of all of these items. And the third is that we wanted to adjust for any um, sort of new innovation of new products coming onto the market. So if we were, um, for six six-month rentals, we anticipate $4,920 in rental income. Um, 1,560 of that would go to actually buying the gear if we pay retail price. Um, then we account for shipping, COGS, refurbishing, and insurance. Those are six times the rate for a single rental. Um, for a final bundle margin um, of 1,800, um, which is a 36% gross margin. Um, this doesn't account for, uh, doesn't account for, um, oh yeah, so salaries and warehouse, I was like, mm, there's two things. Um, okay. So how do we make sweeping here additive? Our team is well positioned to take this forward. 
We build our team with broad set of skills, ranging from strategy, marketing, finance, tech, and legal. We also need to hire a developer to build out our te backing technology stack and a warehouse manager. We have two advisors, including Guy, who's formerly part of Google, JP Morgan, and a startup founder, and uh, Selena Powder, our outside legal advisor. We also need to hire an uh, advisor into our board who has experience in warehouse capacity, preferably with rental experience. And we also have three additional members on our board to run out our depth of experience. <laughs> so we are thinking 1.2 million today to be launched in our, in our LA market. Um, this money will be spent on development, marketing, and inventory that will be purchased on a rolling basis. In our first year, we anticipate about 700 rentals for an estimate of 650,000 six, six, revenues. Um, once we pilot in LA and prove our market and prove our concept in the market, we may seek additional capitals in other um, like convertible nodes or equity rounds within reasons. So Sweet Pea is a solution that saves parents time, money, and effort. And for all the new parents out there, we've got you, and you've got this. Thank you for listening to all this. that the second you get the equipment back, it turns around and goes right out? I mean, how much downtime? And, and while you're answering that one, what if it comes back damaged? Because the next parent is not gonna wanna put their baby in a damaged equipment. Yeah, absolutely. So we have actually a 15% buffer on all of the inventory that we carry. Um, that solves for lumpy demand and kind of offset returns. We do expect keeping a minimal amount within inventory in the warehouse. We want to run this pretty lean because this is pretty capital intensive to have this inventory. Um, and your second question was about refurbishment and making sure that this gear is um, kind of up to snuff for the next parent. We've actually um, started to do a lot of research on the type of laundering methods and the type of breakdown methods. So you have uh, the hard plastics that can be kind of sprayed down and sanitized. Those can go on the shelf for the next rental. But taking off the soft items, um, the fabrics, the mesh, and things like that, going through the proper laundering cycles, and then even replacing those when we do think that they're soiled beyond what we could rent it out for. So a lot of that was baked into the refurbishment costs in that waterfall. I, I have a few questions. Could we go back to the one chart where you showed us the six rentals, the four, not 4,900 and so on model, the 35% margin? So I just want to understand this. So here you have six rentals, six cus. No, no, this. Okay. There you go. So you have six rentals. These are to six different customers. Yes. Okay. Now I thought you told us that your customer acquisition cost was roughly twenty percent. So I'm trying to understand here. Where is the customer acquisition cost in here? Um, the customer acquisition costs, um, like the salaries and the warehouse expense, aren't built into this um, because based off the different bundle, um, that we assumed our customer acquisition costs were about $200 is for the basic or the premium bundle. What we showed here is the unit economics for the basic bundle. Um, but you're right, those costs would be um, taken out before we hit the bottom line. Right, well, They're your margins are going to be a hell of a lot tighter. Yeah. But let me, let me ask another question. Um, when a manufacturer, for example, of the item for the uh, SID and so on, for that sock and so on. So when they manufacture that, obviously they're liable if there's some kind of defect in it, potentially. Um, but when you rent, what is your exposure then? Because I assume they're going to be looking to you, especially if you recycle the item, there could be a, maybe a higher likelihood of a failure or something, and you could end up with a lawsuit about that. So how are, you dealing, how are you thinking about that? Sure, I'm really happy to answer these questions. So we are rental services, but, but you are right. We still subject to the strict product liabilities and some negligence liabilities. And the 
warranty exper warranty some like the lawsuit, a lot of these stuffs. So our theory is there is one option. The first is we can take the assumptions of risk in our in our contract in the renting contract. But our is a startup company. Ob obviously, if we put this into our contract, if it, it sent out a negative signal to the consumer to do that, right? right. So our second. Our second is to exercise our dual care. So we will make sure the cleaning, cleaning process to end uh, in the right place. And we will like to check the stuff, the items, the equipment before we rent into the next customers. And the second, I think is, is probably cannot be reduced to buy some insurance. Mm -hmm. Yes, we want to build a goodwill in the first place. So it's our plan. And do you see yourself getting scale from the potential manufacturers because of the amount that you'll be ordering? Is that is that in your numbers or are you assuming basically in all your numbers you're just paying retail price? Uh, so in all of the numbers we did assume retail price, MSRP. Um, we do anticipate getting favorable pricing or even something along the lines of a revenue share um, with some of those manufacturers that we want maybe a little bit closer to the companies. Uh, because when I look at your numbers here in year five, it looks like you're buying $54 million worth of rental items, yeah. right? Because we have to buy it before we can rent it to the first, exactly. and it's about um, somewhere in the third rental that we break even on the gear itself, so it's about um, a year and a half in. Mm -hmm. okay. If we can look at this chart for one more second. All right, so if we build in the $200 customer acquisition cost, you're now looking at about $600 of gross margin, right? Um, so you're looking at like 12% or so gross margin to operate your entire company. What do you think is the realistic headcount you're going to need to carry in order to operate your business? So it depends on kind of our geographical reach. Um, as we look at it, um, having a really key operations and warehouse manager is gonna be vital to the early success of this company. So having a headcount there and at least one or two pickers and cleaners um, within the warehouse, uh, packaging things, getting them ready to ship, in addition to the founders, um, and then two technology folks on staff to help with the, the back-end tech stack. I, I, I would also like to add to the uh, customer acquisi acquisition cost remains the same for the premium bundle, but we get a lot more revenue and a lot more profit from that. So this is just for the basic bundle, but when you start adding in all of those customers who are doing the custom bundles or the premium bundles, What's the, di what's the difference in revenue, for example, in the premium that's right there? What is the difference? Uh, there's the slide that was, I would trust a little better than. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. Um, so for a single revenue, for a single rental, you're almost doubling in 40% more customer lifetime value. Okay. okay. All right, so the premium bundle, though, includes the, um, wireless breast pump, right? Mm -hmm. So of all of the items that you showed, that's the one that probably creates the most concern with cleaning and refurbishment. Um, how do you think about the liability first and second of all, the willingness of your customers to use a used pump? So a couple things. Um, one is actually we've done a fair amount of research. Again, we've released that survey to a bunch of moms to see if they'd actually be comfortable using it. For the most part, they're okay as long as you already sanitize it, mostly because we can actually replace the flanges, which is the only part that actually touches like any of the breast milk, and the bags are actually replaceable. You're gonna have to buy them anyhow. Um, but in terms of the Willow, that is actually the product that we're the least sort of sure about. It's actually the only one that we haven't had. We don't have any inventory of it, mostly because we're not, like, there is some sort of uh, potential, like, um, FDA issues, but mostly because it's supposed to be for multi-use versus a single use, um, like, single user. Um, experience. Also, um, there, like when we're looking into the manufacturer warranty, that one seems oddly low, and it, it's raising a couple red flags for us. Um, so that one's a little bit on hold, um, but I appreciate the question. So look, I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old, and they're disgusting, right? Like that's <laughs> just what it comes down to. And anything that's touched them, I mean, I don't ever want to touch again. So I think <laughs> a, a minute ago you were saying you could run this entire company with like eight people in a warehouse, right? So 
I'm not even sure eight people could reasonably clean returns of eight customers in a day, let alone package and ship everything else in the company. So I think you might want to take a closer look at you know, what's actually involved in cleaning some of this stuff. As you said, you're a, you're a mom. I know you know what this is like. So you know, this isn't stuff that you can very quickly throw in the, in the wash and have it be usable for another customer. So I think you're, the head count you're anticipating for actually like running this business at scale is dramatically under, under what it will likely be. And given the, the uh, gross margins that you're operating the business off of, it seems like you may have a problem being upside down on this for a, you know, a little bit longer. Forever. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I have any, any questions that haven't been asked. I guess the only thing I'm thinking about is, you know, so I, I also once had a baby, and um, he's a little old now. But, you know, the stuff that you're buying, I think to your point, I don't even know that the manufacturers are thinking it's going to be used for more than, let's say, six or 12 months, right? So how do you know, like, that it's really going to go the distance three years in? Like, if these things really weren't designed to be used for that long, have you, I mean, maybe you haven't done enough time, but, like, you know, have, are, how are you thinking about that, right? Because this is, like, day in, day out use of something like a baby swing, like, with any kind of mechanical part or anything like that that's got, I don't know, batteries, motors, like, something is likely to burn out. Like, how do you know that it's going to it's going to last as long as you need it to last. Um, specifically for the Mamaru and the Ergo Baby, actually, Danny and I went to a baby um, convention. The world's um, largest baby shower convention. Yeah, the ba world's largest baby shower convention. That's going to be super <laughs> fun for you. It was fantastic, actually. <laughs> it was very educational, actually. It was. He, he actually had the Ergo Baby and everything. It was gorgeous. Um, but um, it's actually interesting because actually we spoke to a lot of the manufacturers. Obviously, they have a little bit of a vested interest, I, th I think, in this. But... Um, a lot of the moms that we actually spoke to there said they had used the same Ergo Baby for multiple children over several sets of years. Same thing with the Mamaru. The snow hasn't honestly been around long enough for us to figure out how, like, I mean, the manufacturer says it will last five years. It seems like, for the most part, it is at least lasting multiple children because you actually can buy a lot of these online used, um, and some of them have gone through multiple families, and so it's just difficult to get your hands on one of them. But, um, but once you do, you actually still can use it for multiple. So it seems like it's actually been around. Um, Thank you.